Have you ever prayed But never got an answer And wondered if God was really there Did you feel all hope was gone But in his time he came along And answered the prayer you thought was gone there is no prayer to song, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you want, but He always knows what's right, even when we think it's wrong. Just remember, there is no prayer to shall receive no matter what it is I still believe there is no prayer too small and even when we fall he gives us just exactly what we need there is no prayer too small Just what you want But he always knows what's right Even when we think it's wrong Just remember There is no prayer to small No prayer to small He always Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you. Let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You tried lifting the weight, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening the lid. You try banging on the lid to unsettle the dirt. Maybe somebody will start digging their way down to helping you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, in reality there are people probably standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. <clears throat> Usually, though, people don't think about that when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that maybe, just maybe while you were abusing drugs and alcohol, that you might overdose and take something away that God had given you called life? And if that's not selfish enough, you're taking the life away from people that love and care for you most. People like your mother, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your children, and even your grandchildren. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person I just read about that waited and waited until it was too late. Pick up the phone and call me at 844-405-HELP, and I promise I'll help you take your life back.
People like Larry Geis, he's an addiction recovery coach, over 30 years experience. You can reach him at 516-458-2741 or www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry and I always tell folks like you, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter where you've been. What matters most is that you're here looking for a better today and a brighter tomorrow. Larry Geis, 516-458-2741. Don't forget to pray each and every day. The power of prayer is more stronger than any king or president in the world. From your lips to God's ears, thank Him each and every day for everything that you have and ask Him for forgiveness, guidance, and direction. Ten reasons to forgive the person that you hate most. Forgive the person you hate most. This is your intention for our class or our video right now. Wait, what? Why would I want to begin yoga class with this intention? Did I really need to be reminiscing about a time in my life that I really wanted to forget? After hearing these words, I selfishly began to question my yoga instructor and her motives behind making me do such seemingly torturous tasks. My ego was not comfortable with this. This was my time. This was a place to be blissful and connected to my inner peace. I sat confused and I took a deep breath, several deep breaths. Hate seemed like such a powerful and intense word, but I focused within. For the first several minutes of class, my mind was projection, screen of unpleasant memories, emotions, and even feelings. As I moved through the upward and downward do dog position, I continued to hear her words. Inhale, love, exhale, hate. Again, forgive the person you hate the most. I noticed that. I started to sweat nervously. Is this really possible to do in just one hour, an hour and a half? I thought to myself. I took every ounce of my being to search deep into my memory bank for all the greatest teachers and what they taught me about forgiveness. Again, I heard her words. Forgive the person you hate most. Okay, okay, I got it, I said. In that moment, I surrendered. My ego crumbled uh, to, to its narrowest point. Everything I've learned in childhood came pouring through me. I had no more excuses about why not to forgive the person. Instead, I embraced several reasons to do just that. I focused panish, passionately on those reasons as I stretched my body, my mind, simultaneously. So what were the reasons? Let's look at them. Forgiveness, uh, number one is forgiveness allows us to take responsibility for our own happiness. Most of what we attract into our lives is a mere reflection of what we are inside of. Our thoughts and our actions create our exterior world. The law of attraction teaches us that like, a, uh, like attracts like, and we will never experience a happy ending at the end of an unhappy journey. By holding on to anger and resentment, even one of our subconscious minds, we are pre-paving our journey to be fulfilled with anger and resentment. The way we feel and the emotions we hold are what we use to create all our future experiences. Number two, forgiveness allows us to uh, see everyone in our lives as a teacher. Family members, spouses, friends, bosses, etc. Everyone is brought into our lives to teach us more about ourselves. Thanking them for being part of our journey and teaching us lessons that we now no longer need to learn the incredible step in expanding our own consciousness. This same uh, physiology applies to our negative failed relationships too. Once you truly learn the lesson behind why negative relationships came into your life in the first place, you will no longer attract situations or future relationships that attempt to teach you the same lesson again. You get to graduate and grow up so you no longer are repeating the same unpleasant experience over and over again. Number three is forgiveness helps us stop playing the victim card. Adjusting your perspective to a place of forgiveness and gratitude allows you to no longer play the victim card. Most of the time you are not the victim of anything other than your own vibration and the level of attraction. I'm sorry. When you continue to blame someone else, you automatically give control of your life to someone else and thus set yourself up to be a lifelong victim. Number four is forgiveness makes us aware that most of the people are doing the best they can in our lives. Have compassion for what other people are in their lives. It might not be where you are, but most people are doing the best they can with the particular level, particular level of awareness and understanding. Number five, forgiveness embodies the concept of what goes around comes around, almost like karma. 
We all human and we all have done unthinkable things. And deep down we all yearn for some forgiveness from someone. When we release each other from penalties of their actions, we create a space that their our own thoughtless actions against others can be forgiven as well. Number six is forgiveness forces our own level of conscience to expand. The process of growth is continuous. The moment we stop learning, searching for lessons, and expanding our conscious ego, uh, excuse me, consciousness, the ego steps in and takes over from us. We are always moving towards something greater, and forgiveness helps us to get there faster by eliminating our ties to the dead weight from that. Number seven is forgiveness teaches us to keep our expectations tempered. We should never be expecting anything from anyone. When we do this, we give up our own power to decide. We alone are the creator of our own universe and that we are connected to our own inner uh, source. We no longer need everything from anyone. It's still nice to receive things from time to time from people, folks, but we don't need these things to move forward within our own lives. Number eight is forgiveness teaches us to tone down our in instincts for self-preservation. Too often we injure one another simply because we are trying to protect ourselves. We even um, um, do it at someone else's expense. We all have done it. Becoming aware of this pattern allows us to stop needlessly injuring others for our own benefit. And as you know, what goes around does really come around. Number nine is forgiveness creates a space to let go and love. Not everyone in every situation is meant to be part of our life together. Sometimes they are only there long enough to help open us up into the next chapter of our own story and our own lives. Letting go creates space to let people and experiences in. Number in addition, we are all connected. We have never met another person that we have not loved in some small way. Sometimes we just consciously know how to understand it and show it. Simply put, forgiveness in and um, in and of itself is an act of letting go of our own differences and connecting with the, our oneness and love for each other in the world we all inhabit. And number 10 is forgiveness is the best revenge. A bit of sarcasm in this one, but it's true. You can always seek revenge positively by creating a better future for yourself because nothing annoys an adversary or negative force in your life more than seeing you smile after you've genuinely forgiven them and move forward with your life. Here are some afterthoughts, folks. In most walks of life, I think it's fairly to say, I forgive so and so deep down, deep down though, the resentment and anger still lingers within us all and our subconscious minds keep moving on, which then impact, impacts our future experiences. For me, it took an hour and a half of complete and committed intention, stretching in odd shapes, chanting mantras, and inhaling incense for me to fully embrace all of the lessons I have learned throughout my life and finally forgive. As we walked out of this yoga class, my friend and I looked at each other and at the same time said, wow, I could now understand exactly why and where my instructor uh, was coming from and why she pushed the breathe by uh, the breath by breath forgiveness test. I was extremely grateful. Typically when I leave yoga I feel lighter but this time I feel at peace. I felt free. Now you try the ones that we just talked about. Who would you like to forgive? Who would you like to who would you regret not forgiving before you die? Please share your thoughts by leaving a comment uh, via text 631-599-0218. And don't forget to have the best day of your life. Forgive. Move on. Because when you forgive, you help yourself. And may God bless you.
but never got an answer and wondered if God was really there. Did you feel all hope was gone? But in his time he came along and answered the prayer you thought was gone. There is no prayer to song, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you but he always knows what's right Even when we think it's wrong Just remember there is no prayer too small I have read it for you We'll ask you shall receive is just exactly what we need. There is no prayer to song, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you